Are you a kettlebell beginner and you're looking for a great place to start? I got something for you. Check the first link in the description. It leads to our free kettlebell workout course that will serve you 30 days filled with kettlebell workouts. Click the link, sign up and enjoy. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Leberstark hier. Before I show you a tutorial and a demo of the hybrid swing, we want to cover some theory first. We first have to understand the difference between a high tension or hard style swing and a high volume or kettlebell sports swing. These two swing variants are the most dominant that exist in the kettlebell world today. Both swings are a homogeneous concept in their own right. With a hard style swing, we want to engage into maximum tension to improve power development. With the kettlebell sports swing, on the other hand, we engage into efficient locomotion to improve our cardiovascular system. In essence, you either use one or the other idea. The hybrid swing builds a bridge between the two and is a diversified concept that consists out of the following 10 elements. Number one, it is a hand-to-hand -hand variant. This means we switch hands when the kettlebell is on chest level and reaches its apex. Number two, it's a hinge only movement pattern, which differs from the hard style, where we bend the knees a little bit, or the kettlebell sport, where we use the so-called pendulum leg action. Number three, it is usually done for time up to two minutes. Number four, it involves the usage of moderate weights. Number five, we want to be like water, meaning we want to be mobile and flexible in our mind as well as in our body. You want to understand when to tense and when to relax your muscles. Number six, relaxation is just as important as tension because it teaches you how to be calm while your body is moving and exiting homeostasis. Being calm is a superpower. And according to Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky, if you have a calm expression on your face while you are training, you are putting perfection of skill on display. Number seven, cross education. Cross education is an interesting phenomenon. In essence, it teaches us that if we use a unilateral movement pattern with one side, the other side gets some gains as well. Number eight, the hybrid swing touches base with Tom Meyer's anatomy trains hypotheses. If we follow Tom Meyer's teachings, the hybrid swing trains the so-called functional lines in a unique way. These lines are activated primarily through this idea of cross education. If we train unilaterally with one side, the other side gets some work done as well. This brings me to point number eight, like the snatch, the hybrid swing is the epitome of unilateral training in a unique way. As you swing the bell with your left hand, for example, between your legs, your right leg powers through and drives the kettlebell overhead. So you see there is this interesting X going on. From the left side, from my upper body, the energy is going through, through my right side of my lower body. Number 10. The hybrid swing is accompanied by our breathing method that we call cocaine breathing. In the back swing, you breathe in through the nose like you're snorting cocaine. Now, I don't have no experience in that matter, and kids, you know it, don't do drugs. Nose breathing comes with many benefits, but one of its biggest strengths is it builds so-called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide dilates your blood vessels, improves blood flow, and this is exactly what we need when we are training. Because when we train, we need more oxygen flowing through the body and to the muscles. And the second part of this cocaine breathing idea is in the apex of the swing, when it reaches chest level, we breathe out forcefully through the mouth. This forceful exhale trains your rib muscles as well as your core. And the final point, the hybrid swing is easy to learn, minimizing risk of injury while still serving you these awesome benefits. So this concludes the theoretical part of this video. Now we're gonna jump into the practical applications in a tutorial where I demonstrate you how to do the hybrid hand-to-hand -hand swing. Now let's keep these 10 points in mind while I demonstrate you this exercise. Now in number one, we talked about that the hybrid swing is a hand-to-hand -hand 
variant. You can also do this exercise with a single hand, but for this demonstration and for this purpose, we're gonna stick to the hand-to-hand -hand variant. Now you can do the hybrid swing in two ways. Either have your thumb facing backwards with a so-called backhand in the backswing, or with your thumb facing upwards in the backswing phase of the lift. If I do the hybrid swing with the backhand, I have the kettlebell a little bit in front of me while the handle is in a transverse plane. If I use the front hand, the distance to the kettlebell stays the same. The difference is the handle points in a so-called sagittal plane. Now, as you remember, the biggest distinction of the hybrid swing is this hinge-only movement pattern. With hard style, if the weights get a little bit heavier, we sometimes tend to start bending the knees to a certain extent. And with sport, we use this pendulum leg action or the double bent knee. Now watch as I do the hybrid swing and focus on my hips only. Now in my body weight class, moderate weights means 16, 20, up to 24 kg. While the 24 kg is on the upper end of the moderate weight spectrum and the 16 kg is on the lower end. The reason why I want to stick to these weights, even though now since I've gotten a little bit stronger, I can also use a 28 and a 32 to a certain extent while still being able to hinge only is the heavier the weight gets the more you feel the gravity pull as the kettlebell wants to travel towards the earth in a straight line. And since this occurs with heavier weights, you will start automatically bending your knees. This is not a problem and this is not wrong. But if I want to stick to this hinge only movement pattern, I have to stick to a certain amount of weights. And if you're interested, yes, these are our kettlebells, LS Competition Hollow Core Kettlebells. And if you're interested, we will open up shop soon. Put your name on the waiting list. You'll find a link down in the description. Let's cover relaxation and tension techniques. Now, as I pull the kettlebell into the backswing, making sure that my arm is fully connected to my body, because now the power is coming from the rear side of my legs and I want to transfer this power into my arm, so therefore I have to keep it connected. We call this ABC, arm body connection. This is where the tension is coming from. Boom, right here. And we borrow this idea from heart style. Now the relaxation process happens in the upper part of the body, and we borrow this idea from kettlebell sport. So my back is in this slightly kyphotic position, and I'm leaning back to a certain extent, because as the tra kettlebell travels forward, I want to lean back a little bit to keep the kettlebell closer to my center of mass. We have to understand how to tense our lower body while relaxing the upper body. And as the kettlebell falls back and reconnects with my body, I want to be able to tense my full body to a certain extent because my spine I want to keep my spine aligned and I, I don't want to bend it too much. So this is why your brain has to do some additional computing and your neuromuscular system has to understand what it means to tense different parts of the body and to relax different parts of the body. My mentor Steve Carter calls this the power switch idea. Well, you have to understand, like a power switch when you turn off the lights, for example, when to switch on power and when to switch off. Power. So now take a look at my hips first and then take a look at my back, what it looks like when the kettlebell's in that top position. Watch me. Now let's move on to Tom Meyer's hypothesis of the functional lines as well as this interesting phenomenon called cross education. As I pull the kettlebell into the backswing with my right arm, I'm powering through 
my left leg. We call this also the foot kick technique because now the power is coming from my left leg and my right leg is kind of relaxed to a certain extent. And I'm also lifting my right heel off the floor to increase the duration. My arm is connected to the hip. And to use this part of the hip like an aim of the catapult. So here we are loading the catapult, here we are aiming the catapult. So this is where cross education and these functional lines by anatomy trains come into play. Powering through the left leg, relaxing my right leg, using it like an aim and keeping connection up as long as possible. Arm keeps flying, switchy hands, and now the same thing happens vice versa. Ooh. Many people have commented on the channel and asked why are you lifting your heels off the floor? And that's exactly why I do it. So watch my feet now. And finally, let's cover the breathing method called cocaine breathing. Many people are mouth breathers. And if you only breathe through your mouth, you're missing out on these powerful benefits that nose breathing provides. So as I pull the kettlebell into the backswing, I breathe into the nose. And as I extend the hips and the kettlebell starts flying, I forcefully exhale. Now two things will happen when you start swinging weights, doesn't matter what type of variant you're using. And that is your fitness has to accommodate to swinging the bell. So if you are just getting started, you might try the cocaine breathing method. So it might sound like this in the beginning. But then you get tired after a couple of seconds and now you are just trying to catch your breath and then it sounds like this. which is normal in the beginning. I call this just natural breathing or trying to catch your breath. That's why in experience, we tell our clients to prioritize nose breathing whenever it is possible. So as you are trying to catch your breath, you now try to re-catch your rhythm and you're able to pull off one great inhale and exhale of the cocaine breathing method again, and then you are trying to catch your breath again. As you advance through the exercise, the idea is not just only providing the benefits what nose breathing and forceful exhaling comes along with, the other idea is also using your breathing like a metronome. If you are familiar with these old warships, you always had a guy on these ships who was beating the drums. Boom, 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 boom. The reason he was beating the drums is so that these hundreds of folks have the same rhythm. Boom, 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 boom. Now imagine these hundreds of guys on these warships are your muscle fibers. So if you are using the correct breathing technique, you want to synchronize the movement of your body with the breathing of your body. And then your breathing becomes like a metronome. On a final note, if you want to learn the hybrid swing, you want to understand the hinge. We have done a couple of videos of the hinge on this channel, so let's just cover it quickly. I have a shoulder width stance, I am now pushing my hips back. My upper body reacts. I don't keep the spine vertical. I don't try to keep my back vertical, but I try, try to keep my spine straight or aligned. That's not the same as vertical. So now my upper body moves into the horizontal plane, but I'm still keeping my spine aligned. 
pushing the hips back. Now I feel a lot of tension right here. Now I imagine that my back is either like a table or I imagine like a ski jumper getting ready to jump. And then as I come up, I'm not powering through the knees. I don't want to be knee dominant, but I just want to power through the hips only. It is highly crucial for you to understand that it takes a lot of time to master ballistic exercises. So don't confuse yourself if you're not getting the hang of it right from the get go and take your time and be patient. So here's the next step that I want you to do. You have to like the video, consider subscribing, share this video with a friend and then go watch this video where I cover kettlebells one on one. Even more basics that kettlebell beginners need to know when they start moving these powerful weights. So go watch this video right now.